This episode is brought to you by La Quinta by Wyndham. Your work can take you all over the place, like Texas. You've never been, but it's going to be great because you're staying at La Quinta by Wyndham. Their free bright side breakfast will give you energy for the day ahead. And after, you can unwind using their free high-speed Wi-Fi. Tonight, La Quinta. Tomorrow, you shine. Book your stay today at LQ.com. All right, so what we're going to do to start out this little recording session is... I'm going to say a word, and then you're going to say the next word, and we're just going to go back and forth and form a sentence. <laughs> okay, so it's not word association. We are trying to form a no, sentence. No, it's <laughs> form a sentence is the goal, yeah. Okay, yeah. So <clears throat> I'll start here. The. Big. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> just shows where my mind is. <laughs> Throbbed. <laughs> Throbbed. <laughs> Inside. The quivering. <laughs> <laughs> Nostril. All right, they're, they're <laughs> All right, I think we can <laughs> start. Is, that, was, that just is, went right off the rails immediately. <laughs> just immediately. Just, dick. Just, just to check, was that, was that for track alignment or was that a bit... <laughs> That's that's the beauty of it, Kiri. That's both. Excellent. That's very good. It's clever. the track alignment slash warm up the funny box, warm up the vocals. <laughs> it's a it's a new game I've invented. I didn't invent it, but I like doing these now for the wizard hangs. It's very good. Hello everyone. Welcome back to the inaugural episode of Wizard Hang. We're finally back after a uh, several month hiatus. I'm here with my good my good jolly good friend Kier. Why don't you introduce yourself and plug everything you need to plug? Yeah, absolutely. Let's get get that out straight away. Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Kia Joe, creator of uh, the fantasy fiction audio drama No Return. Um, you might have seen it recently on uh, the Wizard Scroll feed, but if you didn't, you should definitely check it out because it's a great show. You got so much. Like you, you have so many ideas, and they're all great. Like it, it always turns out really good. It's just you got so much going at the same time. It's really hard to keep track of it all. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about your world that you got there? <laughs> the world of no return. Uh, yeah, Ursit Latari. In one the, of your uh, numerous <laughs> several fantasy languages. <laughs> That's actually Sumerian. Um, so that, that one's not, not a fantasy. Oh, that one. <laughs> I guess it is a fantasy language now in the sense that nobody speaks it. <laughs> but, That's true. That's true. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so Ursit Latari is, uh, is Sumerian for the, the, the land of no return. But yeah, um, we're gonna to have to scope this right down because talking about my world is gonna be is gonna be so long and boring. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have a fucking, fucking ten hour fucking episode. Yeah, we'll start at the cosmogony. In the beginning, there was Hulus. <laughs> There's a, there is an episode that deals with the cosmogony of the universe. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> It's just so wild that you thought of all of this stuff. You have, like, fucking <laughs> volumes of lore. Like, not even stories. Just lore that will never see the light of day. Just in your brain somewhere. It will never make it to the story. <laughs> and it's just... It, it really does show. Like, you have a living, breathing world that you've got going on. Meanwhile, I'm sitting over here on my with my fucking <laughs> Orc J. Simpson and my fucking... <laughs> And all these characters that just, like, I really did not think, like, most of my lore is just, like, jokes. Like, my main religious figure in the yeah. Wizard Scroll, in the in the realm of Yergsland, <laughs> is a character named Goblin Jesus. Goblin Jesus. And he's just, yeah, yeah. his whole thing is that he's Jesus, but he's a goblin. And then, <laughs> he does come into play at some points in, like, season two, but that's about it. Like, that's, that's... That's the long and short of it. There's no other religions. There's only one religion because it was confirmed true. <laughs> yeah, by, yeah, by the presence of Goblin Jesus. <laughs> yeah, when Goblin Jesus descended from heaven, like, everyone was like, oh, yeah, that's the religion. <laughs> yeah, I really don't delve too much into religion or politics or anything yeah, like yeah. that in my show. I know that's, like, your bread and butter. Yeah, yeah. So, th th yeah, I've, I've made a real attempt, I think, to uh, to try and foster some uh, you know complexity and richness to the world some might suggest overly complex <laughs> <laughs> but um very much my 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 thinking on this as a as a as a creator is 
it's probably not the advisable way to go when developing <laughs> a story is to create the world first. Maybe allow the world to get created as your story develops. And I think your approach, and you know, I've, uh, this is something I've spoken to, to Sky from from Megastar Seven about as well, is that that approach is. I mean, it's there's a reason I took the the approach that I did by creating the world first. There's a kind of like I don't know a creative philosophy behind why I've done what I've done. I don't right. think it's better, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think it creates a better product. <laughs> <laughs> But there is a reason I've done it. Um, I just wouldn't rec- I wouldn't recommend it to anyone else. <laughs> you know, I, I've been I've been doing some reading of the the Conan books, mm. and apparently, um, Robert E. Howard basically did the same thing. Like he established the world first, and then basically just wrote the Conan stories as a realistic fiction that takes place in that world. And so, like, there is some merit to it. It's it's seen some success in the past. Conan's fucking iconic yeah yeah and so is no return i would say yeah of, of course i mean is <laughs> the uh the 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 creator uh keijo master of saurian song is a, a very well-known very famous very famous gentleman he goes to hollywood parties and is uh and is welcomed everywhere he goes wizard hang 28 for instance he yeah, made it he made the it. prestigious the prestigious <laughs> interview show that i had joe rogan i had to turn him down to get you in here <laughs> Oh, poor guy. He's never. He's he's he's, ne- he's never gonna have the pull I've got. Uh, you yeah, know, exactly. I got you know got all respect for his numbers, but at the end of the day, he's he's no KJ. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I didn't realize that Conan was um was was approached the same way. Um, again, my 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 rationale for it was is I I wanted I didn't think as a new writer. I didn't think I would be able to will into the world stories that weren't in some way bound by like some hard limits. You know, if I was just pulling stuff out of my ass to, 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 to make a story, um, that I would find it really difficult to keep it on track, that I would find it, uh, you know, I would find it difficult to, to ground the motivations of the characters, the plot, all of that would find it very, very difficult to be grounded if there were no hard limits on how I approached it. And so I created hard limits by creating, you know, the laws of the universe that, whilst different, were fixed. Um, histories and institutions of, and, and politics and religion that p- present, you know, barriers and enablers to people's actions and activity in it. And for me, if I hadn't have created the world first, I'd have found it really, really difficult to tell a story. But that is very much a limitation of me as a creator. <laughs> and not, <laughs> and not you again. Made all of, yeah. You <laughs> I made, made all world. of this stuff. All the entire world, the entire universe, and then somewhere in that universe, there is a fucking comic strip called "The Adventures of Cole Lumbo." Yes, yes, there is. Who my character Cole Lumbo based his name off of? <laughs> it couldn't have just been a pun. It had to be based off of something in the universe. It had to be. Yeah. <laughs> it's honestly like so. It's so you too. I love all like all the elf names: Elwin, yeah. Celria, fucking, and then Cole Lumbo. <laughs> Cole Lumbo walks in. Oh, I just I just ran five Lee to get here. <laughs> there was a precursor to No Return called The Tales of Sardar Medu, which was like a mini flash mini flash fiction stories that were Okay. They were like uh rather than it being, you know, traditional radio play, audio drama, it was a lot more it was an audio book essentially. Uh-huh. But okay. with uh, with music and, and sound effects alongside it, little flash fiction stories that, that that I would tell, and I voiced all of that initially. I did get some of my friends to to chip in and uh, friends and family to chip in to do uh, some of the voices on that later on. But the three radio play, as in like traditional audio drama, you know, no um, no prose or or, or mm-hmm. limited narration, <clears throat> that all came at the back end of the Tales of Sardar Medu. And basically, um, I voiced all of that um, on the basis that I was sort of trialing something. So those those first two episodes of the Nymphaeum were me taking my first proper steps into creating, you know, immersive audio fiction away from that gotcha. audio audiobook style stuff. Um, but the Bards episode that um, that you featured on your on on your feed that yes. was 
that was actually originally part of the Tales of Sardra Medu as well. That was the very first piece of radio play fiction that I'd done. Um, Damn, it holds up then. Yeah. Or uh, did you like remake it or like... I re-recorded you, my lines. Because you did all the singing too, yes? <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I, did, I absolutely did not. Um, I did write some of the songs or was involved in the writing of some of the songs, but... Um, uh, the, the the only thing that got re-recorded on that were my lines because, as identified, the the <laughs> awful quality of headphone I was using needed that needed to be sorted. So, <laughs> so I did I did I did most of the recording on my own for a very long time as mm. well. Like the first two seasons of my show, I voiced essentially every single character, with a few exceptions here and there. So like there was like a few characters. I was like, hey, like my my friend from high school was like. Hey, you wanna you wanna do a voice? And he was like, sure. And I'll just toss him in there, kill him off that episode, shit like that. Yeah, yeah. And so my first real like foray into having other people voice stuff for me was when season three hit. Yeah. And it just started like getting really awkward to listen back to me doing two women talking to each other. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it got to the point where it was like, okay, well, I'm 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 part of like Omega Star Seven now. Like I know women actors who would would love to do this for me and would probably do a way better job and it shows they they do <laughs> and it's just glad it's just a completely different experience like migrating from ev- doing everything myself to having actors to do it for me yeah i just have to keep reminding myself these people aren't me <laughs> like if i need something spoken in a certain way i've got to like convey that to them somehow or else they're just gonna so it's like there's a certain inflection yeah so i'm like i can't tell you how many times like i've had to go and go back and have retakes with chrissy or gabby voices of crystal and scarletta respectively like i'm like hey i need this read to read taken um i know you pronounced it oh natural like how a normal person would but this character specifically pronounces it ow natural there's a whole lore reason why <laughs> No, I do. I do know what you mean. The uh, the, the the transition from being the, the 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 soul mind behind it and understanding what 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 the vision of every line or every scene is supposed to be, to then transitioning into like a more of a director role. We're trying to get other people to deliver that vision that aren't you. It's so totally different, and I think yeah, that's, that's something certainly that that <laughs> that particular problem you've just you've just mentioned there. The amount of times that I've encountered the same thing, I've been like, oh. I clearly haven't explained to you. I clearly haven't explained to you why this ridiculous thing that I'm asking you to do is, is you know, I can see why you why your mind would naturally gravitate towards doing this in a normal way, but here's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> so a little a little birdie told me that you had Chrissy voice two characters that seduced each other. Is that correct? <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah. Um, <laughs> Chrissy, Chrissy, not uh, Chrissy, seduced herself, um, mm-hmm. and then had her uh, had 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 her romantic relations interrupted. Uh, her <laughs> romantic relations with herself interrupted in a scene yeah. by a third character, also voiced by. Her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did. No, you know, that it's was... funny that you mentioned that because I too have a scene in my upcoming season where Chrissy does that. <laughs> Two characters played by her that that seduce each other. <laughs> great, great minds, great minds. Yeah, great minds say. think alike. Exactly. You still there? Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry, man. Just... Yeah, no, yeah. It's because my my screen went black. Oh shit! <laughs> I was like, oh no, <laughs> what's, what, what's happened there? Yeah, yeah. Like... No, that happens. That happens to me all the time. Actually, like right before this recording, I just went in and made sure my screen settings don't go dark until like two hours of. Yeah, inactivity yeah, yeah. because like you would think that while the while reaper is going and it, it's clearly doing something the screen would stay you on think so right <laughs> you would think that like like if you're watching a youtube video the screen doesn't do that mm. but like if you're doing something else like this like i mean it, it, the good thing is that it stays recording yeah that's that's <laughs> it's a really <laughs> <laughs> that they didn't just it doesn't just switch off. Yeah, that is quite a useful function. Right? Speaking of, I just accidentally switched off my recording. <laughs> <laughs> I got this mouse called the Shur- uh, called the the Logitech MX Master 2S. This mouse here, let me tell you, is fucking awesome, specifically for editing audio. For one simple reason. 
This thing has two scroll wheels. It's got a vertical scroll wheel like most mice have, but it also has a horizontal scroll wheel that you can scroll left and right. Now that does sound very useful, actually. You can never go back to a normal mouse afterward, is the thing. It's so useful for so many things. And plus, like, all the buttons are programmable. You can have shit like that adjusts your volume. You can have a button that stops your recording for you by accident. You can do all sorts of stuff. <laughs> Holy shit. What, what, what was the name of that, uh, that, that wonderful, uh, product again? Just, just to make sure that we... it's the, it's the MX Master. If you look that up, I have the 2S, but they have like a bunch of them now. Yeah. I don't think they sell the 2S anymore, but, but the 3, the 3S, it's all the same shit. It's just a different, like, how are we going to get that sweet Logitech money if they don't sell it? Oh anymore? my God, right? If they, <laughs> just, like, if they just sent me a mouse, I would fucking shill out. You have no idea. <laughs> They just sent me a free mouse. I would fucking have an entire episode of Wizard Scroll. I would write an entire script. That would just all be the characters. The- <laughs> like I know, hey, hey, Azataz, computers haven't been invented yet, but check out this mouse. <laughs> oh wow, is that the MX Master Two S? You can horizontal Wizard Scroll with this thing. <laughs> oh, fucking class! The horizontal Wizard Scroll. That's my new sex move. <laughs> delved into No Return. We delved into Wizard Scroll a little bit. What do you say we can... I, I, I feel like what, what I've been doing a lot with these wizard hangs is I've just been telling people how fucking great Omega Star 7 is. <laughs> like, that's the next thing on the that, list. That's got to be, yeah. Fucking, <laughs> Skyler is such an incredible guy. Just like, just the, not only because he recognized how good of a voice actor and singer I am and has me voice a bunch of shit for him, but everything else is really good, too. He's the one who introduced me to Chrissy and the entire Omega Star 7 crew. And it's just been wonderful working with him for all, all this time. I'm really excited to hear what, uh, his dirt and dust spinoff is like. He's oh, been, yeah. he's been very secretive with that. It's just him and James in the writer's room. He's not letting anyone else touch it until the table reads. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited for it as well. Like, um, all, all I, I just see little, uh, st- um, moments where he'll come out and talk about how great it is, but with no, <laughs> but with no detail. Be like, oh, we just did this amazing, this 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 amazing writing session. God, it's gonna it's gonna be so great. And I'm like, yeah, please God, give me some information about this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Western mecca. I, yeah, I know. I saw the original. <laughs> <laughs> I was there for that. I was in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I'm also very excited for it, and I also will yeah. take any opportunity to say how wonderful uh, Omega Star Seven and how, and the Omega Star Seven team are as well. In fact, my last uh, I did an interview for the first episode of, and I think 50 percent of that interview was me talking about Omega Star Seven, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it got cut because that it was only for a natural bit. reasons. Yeah, for natural reasons. <laughs> so, how did you meet Skyler originally? Because you know, you've known him for quite a little bit longer than I have, I think. So I. I found Skylar's work when, um, so when Omega Star 7, I think, was still in its, um, improv, um, stage before it had gone to the, to the scripted, um, episodes. That's when I was creating the Tales of Sardra Medu, that, you know, flash fiction audio stories thing. And I intersected, um, we had our sort of Venn diagram overlapped on, on Twitter in the, uh, in the audio drama space on, on Twitter before it became a steaming pile of shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and basically, you know, I, I checked out a couple of episodes of Mega Star 7 based on, um, you know, based on a recommendation and I messaged Sky saying, wow, absolutely love this. The music is insane. The, the jokes are absolutely ridiculous, especially that five minute opening. <laughs> opening oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trey, you touch my nuts. Yes. Oh, I don't slip. I didn't touch your nuts. I didn't grab your nuts. <laughs> that scene is so long. No, they're great. They're fucking geniuses over there. Yeah. And, um, and I, I basically, you know, I, I showered Sky with a bit, with a bit of love. And then he said, mm-hmm. "If you wanna, if you ever want any help with anything, then uh, then just just ask." And I immediately said, "Hey, can I have some help with something?" <laughs> um, 
<laughs> which he very, very kindly um, uh, followed through on, and then uh, later on asked me to to play the role of Vax Arden, which I was absolutely ecstatic to be able to play the main character and hero of Omega yes. Star 7. I was just about to say, I can't believe you nailed the main protagonist of I Omega know. Star 7. <laughs> Yeah, fucking I, your 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 portrayal of Vax Arden <laughs> is just a fucking magical thing. Like you're just like this space wizard samurai, <laughs> fucking Jedi mind tricks people into fucking killing each other and shit. It's just so epic and awesome, and just the rest of the show pales in comparison. Really, uh, I I agree. I agree. We need the I, we need the Vax Arden Zoots McKenzie spinoff. That's what we need. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> fucking good put those two guys in a room together <laughs> that'd just be awful ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, Vax Arden my favorite space wizard <laughs> how you doing today and who are you I am Zoltz McKenzie of course of Star Runner Records ah. what the fuck are you doing in my office <laughs> I appear to have materialized from the in between <laughs> Oh. Omega you know, Star Skyler, is Yeah, Omega <laughs> Star is so great. We'll just keep talking. This is an Omega Star 7 fan podcast now. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to um, the inevitable return and victory of Vax Arden because... Um, oh, yes, 100%. Yeah. I'm rooting for you. <laughs> yeah, so I met Skylar in around 2021. Mm. So, like, right around that same time, I would maybe. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, about the same time. Um, I think he had like maybe the first four or five episodes of Outlander out. So it was still the improv era. I remember I was on Reddit one day, like going through r slash audio drama or whatever, just like trying to self promo wizard scroll wherever I could without yeah, getting yeah. banned from, I've gotten banned from a few subreddits for, for ceaseless self promos <laughs> all over. Ditto. So I've been. <laughs> <laughs> And so I saw a post, a self promo post from Skyler about Omega Star, and I was just like, "Wow, this is this sounds like a good good podcast. Let me check this out." And I listened to that first episode of Outlander. Like I I skipped the uh, the actual play stuff as he recommended, and I was just like ironing my clothes. I remember I was ironing my clothes for some reason, and I was listening to this podcast, and I was just like, "Holy fucking shit! This is this is hilarious! Like the voices, the sound design, the little." Like the 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 music, all the of music. this is just done in house, and then at the very last sentence, it was like, "Oh, slip! What are you eating there? Nuts!" And then the fucking <laughs> outro music plays. From that moment, I was hooked. I went back onto Reddit and I was like, "Oh, you guys got to check out!" Like, in addition to self promoing <laughs> Wizard Scroll, I started also telling people, "Hey, check out Omega Star Seven too. It's also pretty good." And then Skyler, like, saw one of my comments on his post and was like, oh, thanks, man. And then from there, we just, like, inter, 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 like, our fates intertwined. intertwined. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I had him on for, I had him and James on for an episode of Wizard Hang way back when. And at the time, it was the longest episode of anything I had ever produced. <laughs> and he was very proud of that record for a very long time until, uh, Wizard Hang 15. Where I went to Colorado and and recorded some stuff with some friends of mine, like at like live, like yeah, at yeah. their place, and that went on for three hours. So it it blew Skyler's record up, it blew it out of the water a little bit, yeah. And he has yet to reclaim his title. Yeah, has he has he spoken to you since? <laughs> <laughs> I think he doesn't know that that I and Zoots McKenzie are like the same person because he always <laughs> refers to me as Zoots. He doesn't know that I'm Chris. <laughs> He's like, "Hey, Zoots, can you give me, can you give me Billy Crater's voice?" <laughs> It'd be even better if he was messaging you, Chris. Can you get in touch with Zoots? <laughs> <laughs> he works at a, a Sweetwater Sounds. He sold me all my stuff, and for some reason, when I call him up, like he he's mentioned that in my records at Sweetwater, that he has written down, "Call him Zoots." <laughs> and so we have a thing so like if anybody aside from Skyler like gets in touch with me from Sweetwater that they're supposed to refer to me as Zoots McKenzie and if they do I have to do the voice for them <laughs> I don't know how that came up but that was just something that Skyler put in for me Has it, happened yet? it hasn't happened yet oh. but 
hopefully soon. Live, live in hope, yeah. <laughs> live in hope. If I get a call from, hey, this is this is so and so from Sweetwater. Is this Zoots McKenzie? Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. I'm really loving this microphone you got me. I can scream into it real loud. As you can probably tell, a lot of my comedy style stems from my ability to t- scream into the mic into a microphone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That whole like I literally Matthew McConaughey my way into their production with that fucking Zoots McKenzie was the was the like I mean I had a few roles here and there before that but Zoots was like my big break it was supposed to be just a one off character but then they loved it so much that they brought him back for like a very important scene of like Moxie getting fired from <laughs> from the record company they they, they needed me to do Replace it place for proxy yeah <laughs> yeah I'm replacing you with a synth. <laughs> And I actually, like, during that, like, while I was recording that, I came up with some shit that they ended up, like, rewriting the scene a little bit. He's like, get the fuck out of here or you're fired. <laughs> but you already fired me. <laughs> I said get out now. Oh, I love that. I love yeah. that. And, that's, I, uh, yeah. and that, that tracks us so much. <laughs> just, being, just being like, I'm part of your show now. I'm Zoots McKenzie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is the Zoots McKenzie show featuring Vax Arden and others. <laughs> <laughs> and then from there, it was just like, fucking, hey, Chris, you want to be in the writer's room? You want to help us write a script? And I was like, sure. I fucking love that shit. Like, it's such a different beast. Yeah. Working, helping someone else write something is so much more chill. It's so much more fun. Mm. I mean, I'm not going to say it's more fun, but it's, it's a different vibe. No, hundred percent. When I was when I was helping Skyler write his show, like during uh, the Vestige season four of of Omega Star, that's where I really like got more involved with the writers' room. Did did, did they finally decide how to pronounce that word? I believe it's the Vestige. The yeah, vestige. that's the canonical. Yeah, the canonical <laughs> one. <laughs> Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda, you never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. Here's a here's a fun thought experiment here. If you were to Freaky Friday with anybody from the Omega Star team, who would it be and why? Oh, who would? Shit. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Here's the problem with this. <laughs> if I had Freaky Friday with Sky, for example, I would have to then perform <laughs> to to the level to the level that Sky can perform. And I got numerous bands. Yeah. I, and also you have to go to his job and sell people equipment based on your knowledge of equipment. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Um I think they're all too talented. Everybody on the Omega Star team <laughs> is too talented for me to freaky. It, how long is it? It's just the day. It's just the day, right? It'll be from Friday to Friday, so you get a week. Got a week. You got a week in someone else's body. Who's it going to be? See, I'm I'm the only Brit, aren't I? Because I was thinking like I could just take a week of sick leave, yeah. right? But you guys don't have labor rights, do you? No. No. Shit. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's six days off a year. <laughs> God, that's so grim. <laughs> Oh god. Um I could probably I could probably put up with being an American for a week maybe. Um you just like drive on the wrong side of the road by accident. <laughs> Sky, like Friday rolls around, Skylar wakes up in the fucking <laughs> hospital. He's got a neck brace and shit. And then he's like, "Kier, you fucking bankrupted me by getting me in the hospital." He's like, "What do you mean, mate? You don't have fucking health insurance for free?" <laughs> oh god, I completely forgot. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, who would I Freaky Friday with? It would ha- it would have to be it would have to be Sky, 
I'm, I'm afraid it would have to be Sky that I would that I would have to do it with, and it would only to it would only to be to to humble myself I think as much as, <laughs> as much as possible so that in every aspect of my creative life I could know exactly how poor I am in comparison. Right. <laughs> that would be that'd be a great benchmarking experience yeah. I think yeah I can just about play the guitar just about play almost the, just, almost play the guitar <laughs> I can almost write an audio drama. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing pretty good for I'm yourself. Doing, I'm, doing, I'm doing okay. So it'll be, um, yeah, 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 I think... Um, you're going to pick Skylar just to humble yourself. Yeah, just to humble myself. What about you? Who would you have? I think I would have to go with Chrissy. Are sure you don't want my uh, National Health Service, no? <laughs> <laughs> like, you mentioned a lot of good points. Like, Skylar has, like, a fu- like, he plays instruments. He has a job where it's, like, based on his knowledge. Where I would probably financially ruin him in a way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like I would have to quit his band. I would have to fucking <laughs> I would have to quit the band. I'd have to like double down, try to try my dangdest to sell shit. I'm not a salesman. And I'm not a fucking like I don't know any of this shit. So <laughs> you probably get fired too. <laughs> so I feel like I would pick Chrissy. One, because, like, she works in web design, which is something I could probably do. Like, I I've, I've have experience in that field. And two, she's a voice on my show. So while I'm in her body, I could just record <laughs> all the lines you could get with, her, with her setup. <laughs> exactly. We've been looking at this the wrong way, you know. Yeah. Who do we trust? It's Freaky Friday. They get our body as well. It should be a question, who do, who do, we, who do we trust? <laughs> who do we trust to be in our body for a week? <laughs> that's true, that's true. I've, on, that, on that basis, it would be Chrissy. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think Chrissy would, uh, would, would do a fantastic job. I think she could easily handle my job. <laughs> <and> could, <laughs> so, yeah, it'd be Chrissy. I've changed my mind now. <laughs> okay, yeah, I've, I've convinced you. You've convinced me, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you do have to keep in mind the other person's going to be walking around in your body yes. for a week too. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. No. Chrissy's fucking short. Like you, you like it's it take it would take some getting used to because she's like over a foot shorter than I. She's like four eleven, and I'm like six one. How tall are you? Five eleven and a half, and that half is very important to me. That's a hard half. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if you're wearing sh- when you're wearing shoes, you're six foot ex- even. Exactly. Yeah. You're 180 <laughs> centimeters tall. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you you mentioned you you can play guitar, kind of. Ka- kind of. Yeah. Would you I, care to expound on that? Uh, yeah. I mean, so I I've played guitar since I was a, since I was a kid, um, but never particularly very well. Self taught. Uh, but no, but no real commitment to it. Mm-hmm. Kind of like uh, during high school, which I believe is your middle school. I think that's how that marries up. Um, was in some bands. University um, was in was in some bands, but went from being wanting to be like a shred guitarist, like John Petrucci and Joe Satriani, to basically playing reggae music. By the time I got to uh, <laughs> by the time I got to university, um, so you know, I've been been in a few bands, and I can. I can play rhythm guitar. Um, I can sing and play at the same time, but nothing particularly impressive. Again, which is why you know quite a slow syncopated beat will will do for me by the time by the time <laughs> I, by the time I got to to university. Um, but I haven't really picked up my guitar, I think, properly, except for my um, my lad, my my kid Matthew. He um, he's ten and he plays piano, and we jam together. Um, oh, that's cute. That's awesome. Yeah, so that's that's yep. a, just a nice way to keep him interested because he does not enjoy playing piano at all. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's a real battle to get him to practice. So we have a uh, we have a jam session that we do. Um, but other than that, I haven't really picked it up since I since I graduated. And I graduated in what twenty twenty twelve. Yeah, twenty twelve. Oh my! So um, it's been a long time since I've I've really played. Uh, I did, however, one of the stories on on No Return. I did the intro to that on my guitar um and it oh, was shit. and it was literally just because i'd been listening to omega star 7 and i'd been listening to um another show wizard scroll wizard scroll yeah that's it <laughs> and, that, and that had that had a banging guitar intro on it as well my, in- <laughs> my iconic guitar intro yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh and i was like and i was like i, I want to 
want to give this a crack. And so I made a little uh, mini intro um, on, on my guitar and I was like, cool, that will do. And and now forever I will can say that I'm talented enough to have made it to make my own intro music. I'm never going to do it again. <laughs> but that's good that you have the experience. It's awesome. Yeah, so I've, 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 uh, I tried learning keyboard or yeah, like the piano. And I feel like I, I went about it all wrong. I didn't really like, I was consistent. Like I consistently practiced like on a, almost a daily basis for like a year, over a year. And I would use this software called melodics, which is basically just guitar hero, but for piano. Yeah. It's the best way I can describe it. And I got pretty good at playing along with the song as the keys, as the notes came down. But when it came time to like jam or like play something without notes to be- appearing before me, yeah. I would just freeze up. I have no fucking idea what to do. I have a very like very loose uh knowledge of music theory. Like I kind of get it yeah, yeah. on a on a on an internal level, but when it comes to like actually putting it to words, that's where I'm like, what the fuck do I even say? But I did actually some of my Keyboard playing did make it into Wizard Scroll, but not in the way you would think. Yeah, <laughs> go on. How, how did it? How did it find its way in? Um. So when I bought my keyboard, and like it was New Year's Eve, twenty twenty one, I bought my keyboard around there, and it came with Ableton. So I was able to install Ableton Lite onto my computer for free. And then when I installed that and I plugged it in and after fucking hours of troubleshooting and YouTube videos of how to get the the piano to play sound in Ableton, I finally figured that out. I was playing around with the various instruments that were installed in there and I found one that sounded like a sci-fi jet engine or something. And I just pressed the key down and it was like... (laughs) And I was playing with the mod wheel and shit and... I just, rec- so I did, I had no idea how to export in Ableton. So what I did was I had Ableton open in one tab and Audacity open in my other screen, recording my computer audio. And I was just like playing, like just pressing the key down over and over, just making it sound like an engine revving and shit. <laughs> and that is what I ended up using in Wizard Scroll. I think it was the season two finale is where is the debut of my musical prowess. It's just. <laughs> And I've reused that sound a few times as well. <laughs> it's, it's worked really worked for you. I had to go come, come back to it. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's so cool. Are you, do you still play at all? So, um, I mean, over 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 than creating that engine sound. I'm I've right. I've the extent of my playing was just like using melodics and seeing how good I could get at songs. Mm. But then, like, I just haven't like really touched it in a while. Yeah, yeah. Actually, what happened was my keyboard. Was I, I, I usually, I used to keep my keyboard like right, right at my desk, right next to me, to my left, directly beneath the air conditioning vent. Very convenient spot. So when, when one day the air conditioner decided to drip water down onto the keyboard and fucking broke it, I was so upset. I was like, fuck. And so I called up Skylar. I was like, hey, my keyboard just broke. Can you sell me a new one? <laughs> <laughs> and so I got like a smaller model without as many bells and whistles on it because I didn't know what the fuck any of that shit meant anyway. And so he gave me a small, like he sold me a smaller one for a very good price. And it came in. I used it for a little bit. And then like learning from my mistake, I, I don't keep it in my office under that vent anymore. I keep it in my room. So now when I, if, if I have the itch to play the, 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 the keyboard, I have to walk all the way to my room, which is on the opposite end of the house. And I got to grab it and I got to bring it all the way back into the office, set it up and then play. And just that inconvenience of having to walk to, from it's one enough. side of the house to the <laughs> other and back has just completely turned me off of the idea of playing like almost entirely. I, uh, yeah, I haven't played in a couple months. Actually, I've just been focused on editing season one redone. And that's just taken up like the bulk of my time. It's uh, all coming to fruition now, though. It's uh, awesome to see. Yeah. It. It's awesome to see it coming out, man. Thank you. <laughs> you did. You, you, your contributions to that were were just <laughs> heavenly. <laughs> it was like you have no idea. Like I was in the writers' room with my friends. We were like, okay, so I, I, so in the original version of the episode, yeah, 
there was a, a very graphic sex scene where it's me, the narrator, describing all the sexual acts that Greg Ork and Jess Orca do. And I was, I, I knew for, since now I'm, I'm in Fable and Folly, I have a lot more ears on me, a lot more eyes on me. I don't want to, like, turn people off the show by, by literally turning them off or yeah. on, for that matter. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm, not an, I'm not an erotic show. Yeah. Like, how do I fade to black in a funny way? <laughs> and then my friend John, a.k.a. Dr. Phil, comes up to me and he's like, hey, what if we, what if it's just this? It was at this point in the story where the narrator passed out, and we had to hire a mime to interpret the rest of the story. <laughs> and that's when, and then when he said that, it fuck, I just laughed so hard because I knew at exactly at that moment who I needed to be the fucking <laughs> the backup narrator and the mime. <laughs> they <They're> fucked. <laughs> that's probably my favorite gag of the entire season. Oh my god! Who wrote this fucking? Oh, I'm gonna be sick. Oh, 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 God. It was at this point in the story that the unsavory sights and smells of this setting caused the narrator to pass out. So, we hired a mime to interpret the rest of Greg Ork and Jess Orca's activities. <sighs> the fucked. Finally, people can stop harassing me on my feed about your show. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, did you see my comment? I did, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, you fucking dick. <laughs> so tell me about that. Like, people have been, <laughs> been yeah. hounding you for my show. Yes. Yeah, so on the, so on the uh, Spotify Q&A, since I released you at the, the feed drop for your, for your show, people... <laughs> People messaging being like, so when's the next Wizard Scroll out? And I'm like, you realize that's not me, right? <laughs> that's, that's, that's Chris. A.K.A. Cole Lumbo P.I. <laughs> hey, I've got all the lines in for it now, so I can actually make it. Oh, shit. Yeah. So now it's go time. Now it's go, now it's go time. I've been waiting, for, been waiting for two people for ever to get me, to get me the lines. Holy and, and they finally got me the lines. I will say that my, I'm sure it's the same with every single show, the single greatest mm. bottleneck for production on anything yeah. is waiting, waiting on for people. voice actors to get you the lines. That that was one of the things I miss about recording everything myself was I could just the knock control. it all out at yeah. once and then just start. Yeah. Now, like I have to wait for ever certain. <laughs> I, yeah, I have to wait for certain people because I know like everybody's got lives. Oh, so I'm yeah, not going to be yeah, mad yeah. at someone if they can't do it. Yeah, yeah. it's just like it's it's a it's a completely different ball game when you have other people involved. Oh yeah. Yeah, a hundred percent. So outside of no return and mm -hmm. all your podcasting ventures, like what else do you like to do for fun? For fun? Oh god, I can't remember what that's like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to have loads of hobbies. <laughs> um, basically, you know, as it is with most people who've got kids, your hobbies become taking your kid around to their hobbies. So that's uh, that's become a lot of my life now. I desperately tried to get my uh, my kid into the sports that I like. So I'm I'm a judoka. I I've competed um, nationally um, in the UK. Oh fuck, nice! Um, for, in, in judo, and that's always been my big passion for sports. And I really wanted to get my son into it. And I'm really into rugby as well. Um, I hate football um, or soccer, as you guys call it. Um, mm -hmm. I Didn't think you start calling it soccer and then? Then changed it up on us. Oh, you're about in, historically. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Couldn't. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Yeah, I, I I know that like you go, you guys call autumn fall, and I believe we, we do. We do both. You do both. So apparently, yeah. we, apparently, we used to call it fall, and you and it was more common to call it autumn in the in the states, and apparently we switched it. So I couldn't possibly tell you. Possibly we called it soccer at one point. Although I never met an English person who will admit that. <laughs> but I, will, I will concede that it is within the realms of possibility within history um, but I'm just not a fan uh, I, fi I find it really really boring um, my family are split between two uh, two uh, teams in Merseyside where we're from and I stayed out of it as a kid by just going just pretending I supported the like team two divisions lower so nobody would talk to me about football and unfor <laughs> unfortunately my son is obsessed with football so he's gone and he's gotten very, very good at it, which is even worse because I can't even dissuade him now. Um, and I've ended up being the, the coach for the, for the football team as a result, despite having zero interest <laughs> in football to support my son's passion. I've it's gone. like, all right, lads, just grab the ball like a rugby ball. And just... <laughs> it's 
Let's play a real sport. Let's play a real man sport. <laughs> yeah, I, I also, like, this might just be an American take, mm. but I, I do believe that soccer, or as you call it, football, is fucking boring as hell. <laughs> like, you sit there for three hours, and then the, go- the, the score at the end is fucking one to one. Oh, you guys don't even have like draws, do you, in your sports? That's and then, so wild. Like, <laughs> it ends. It ends in a draw, and then the entire thing is decided by the five minutes of penalty shots at the end. Only in a tournament. So, in a normal game, you can just end the matches as, as a draw. But it's only in a tournament that you would have penalties. Mm. I wouldn't know enough about soccer to tell you if we had that or not. But all <laughs> I know is, if they just replace the sport of soccer with just the penalty kicks, it would be way more interesting because that's where all the pointage comes from. <laughs> So the the only sport there's only two sports that I think are more boring than um, than football. Um, and I'll, I'll I'll admit that actually the more I've got into football through my son and I've understood the sport more, the more interested I've become in it. But that doesn't mm. stop the fact that it is bottom three. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it, I now consider it to be slightly more entertaining than cricket, um, which is the single most boring sport on the planet, um, and the second most boring sport on the planet, American football. There's about three, yeah, I can three, see that. three minutes of play and 12 yeah. minutes of waiting around and then three yeah, minutes of just, play. <laughs> yep. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> when it's like 30 seconds of play and then it cuts to a commercial for yeah. fucking three minutes and then it comes back to the, the game for like two more plays. It's so like, I, like, there's strategy involved. Oh, well, sure, for it's sure. It's basically like an RPG for the coaches and yeah, the yeah. players turn, and shit. It's, it's, it's a turn-based strategy game. <laughs> it legitimately is a turn-based strategy game. And I'm sure, like, if you know the ins and outs, it's like, oh, he did the, he did the ultimate cum gambit. He moved the ball <laughs> that way. Whatever the fuck they call the, the plays. Two, blue, 42, 10 hut, fuck you, hike. <laughs> Whatever. Like, all that shit is like, if you're in it, that's got to be really interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, to an outside observer who's like, I'm sitting here at the Super Bowl party. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I don't even care about the commercials anymore because that's all that, like, the people who don't like football watch it for the commercials. And, like, why are you going to watch a bunch of commercials? Like, that's just, like, feeding into the capitalist fucking machine. You're going to have to explain this one. You're going to have to explain this one to me. What's this about the commercials? Um, So, basically, the Super Bowl is, like, the most watched event every year in, in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever. And so, naturally, like, companies will go all out to make the, 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 the newest, most entertaining commercial that they can. Is the gist. Oh, so, like, right. okay. yeah, you've yeah, got to yeah. pay, like, fucking millions of dollars for a fucking 60-second spot in the Super Bowl. Yeah. So people people make some, re- like, really high-quality stuff. So, like, high, high exactly. production value. That makes sense. It's a very high production value event. And then, like, two days later, they'll play the same commercial, but they'll cut a bunch of shit out of it because it's a commercial. And they, they change it from 60 seconds to 30 seconds or whatever. And so it's just, like, yeah, Super Bowl commercials in general are just, like, like why even bother like i like last the last super bowl that rolled around like i legit like i did not like fucking care at all i was in my office editing wizard scroll that night i'm pretty sure yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, i'll be I'll, I'll, I'll be honest so like i've only i've watched two super bowls in in, in my life and they were uh by accident <laughs> um, and this so- isn't the football i wanted to watch <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, but when like you have a halftime show of that scale, in order to get people to watch it, it probably is some indication of how boring the sport is. <laughs> yeah. No, um, the sport in general, yeah. yeah. But that, that 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 being said, you know, my, my my chosen sport is judo, and that is so fucking boring to watch. I love taking part in it. And I will And that sounds like it's a very fun thing to do. Like Yeah, but it's so boring. You and your opponent just beating the shit out of each other. Like, that's that's entertainment, at least for you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, to watch, like for the outside... It's so crap. <laughs> so, like, for the outside observer who doesn't know, like, the intricacies of your movements... A, a lot of standing around and people, like, slightly moving their hands across somebody else's <laughs> clothes to try and get an improved grip. <laughs> and, you're like, nobody will see that except for, like, the, the people who are, who, who are judokas themselves. Not, yeah, exactly. All of whom are probably training instead of watching the, <laughs> watching the match. 
So it's you know it's 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 likely the same for all sports. Although I will say mm-hmm. I've never struggled to watch rugby. I find rugby um, fascinating, and that's one that I think is definitely a good spectator sport. Come on, England! Score some fucking goals! What do you think of hockey? So I've only recently started watching that. My lad actually wants to start doing it. Um, you're about ice hockey, right? Not not field hockey. My, yes, yeah. ice hockey. My philosophy on hockey is that they took what they took soccer. And they made it better in every conceivable <laughs> way. Like th- my the big things with soccer is that the field is fucking enormous. Mm. The players don't move that fast relative to how big the field is. There's a ball, there's players and shit, but they're going so slow. There's nobody scoring. And so what you do is you take the field, you physically make the thing smaller. Make it as hard as possible to stand on. (laughs) (laughs) And it's like the players that fucking, they beat the shit out of each other. Like literally like get into fist fights during the game. And it's a lot more entertaining for the spectator. Like, oh my God, he just fucking knocked. He just gave that guy a black eye through the helmet somehow. Holy fucking shit. It's a lot more fun. Yeah, yeah, I've been to a hockey game. I went to a, I forget the name of the stadium. Even though I was there, um, fucking whatever the 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 Florida Panthers, the 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 Panthers, I guess. <laughs> Someone can correct me on that. I'll, I'll edit in post the correct name. <laughs> yeah, I, I I completely agree with it. We we only just started watching it at this Christmas just passed because uh, we were where were we? We were into we'd gone to Switzerland for a family holiday, and um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and had we were having a very very bad time. I'm, I'm trying not to offend all Americans and all Swiss people, um, but we didn't have a particularly pleasant time. And we ended up spending most of our evening sitting in a bar. Um, this is my with my ten year old son at a, <laughs> at, a, at a sports bar watching either football or hockey, and um, we ended up getting really, really into the hockey because we were there every, every every night and they had the hockey on every night. Yeah, so you got to pick between hockey and soccer. <laughs> You're gonna pick the fucking the better one. <laughs> Exactly. So unless unless specifically Liverpool were playing, which what what my lad wanted to watch, we were watching the hockey, and we we got really really into it. We got very very excited by it. And my we've got um we've got a hockey team near near us in Manchester, and then um, we came back. And my son's been asking me since since we come back, when can he go and start playing hockey? So hopefully I'll get, I'll be able to slowly move him away from football into uh, into something a little bit more entertaining for me. <laughs> no, no, that's good. That's that's the whole point of having children. It's to entertain yourself, yeah. 100%. Entertain yourself. Have more people on this earth who like you. <laughs> Until they reach adulthood and inevitably resent you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, circling back to cricket. Go on, back to cricket. What the fuck is cricket about? How do you play it? What are the rules? Because I under I understand it's just like the guy is trying to knock the sticks over and the other guy is trying to whack Stop the him. ball. Yeah, yeah. One and there's two to bases. The, yeah, someone's trying to knock the stick over. Someone's trying to knock the stumps over. Someone's trying to stop him. And that's about it. Most of the time uh, in cricket is spent drinking tea and eating sandwiches. Uh, if you're on the field, if you're off the field, <laughs> most of the time is spent drinking beer and not watching cricket. Um, <laughs> if you ask most people who enjoy cricket what the best thing about going to watch cricket is it is the beer getting drunk with your mates because they're not going to stand there for five days watching watching the match <laughs> um, and you do know, matches go for several days five days five days for one match of one cricket match. yeah what the fuck there are there are variations now there's the shorter shorter variations but the you know the I'm I'm going to start upsetting people by showing my lack of knowledge of cricket. British man doesn't understand <laughs> cricket. Well, there's different forms of cricket. One of which you'll have you'll have five days of matches. You can have single day matches and hundreds and all this kind of stuff. But the most boring version of it is the is the five day cricket, um, and it is just awful. <laughs> mm. It's just awful. Um, it sounds awful. Yeah, and you you know someone will bowl the ball and they will. Try to stop it from hitting the, the stumps, and if they're lucky, they'll they'll hit it. And if if they hit it, and someone else and and if someone doesn't catch it, they'll do a run. Or if they hit it far enough and it rolls and touches a little barrier, they'll get four points. But if it goes really far and past that point without rolling, they'll get six points. And that's it. Okay, that's it for five days. 
<laughs> that could be like condensed into like an hour. The, Five fucking days is wild. At, at school, when you learn it as a kid, we do quick cricket, which is good fun to play because it doesn't last for five days. <laughs> like, what could like? What do you think of baseball? Then have you ever seen a baseball match or baseball ne- game? Never seen it. Have seen films about it, but still mm-hmm. don't fully understand what it is. Um, it does seem very similar to cricket. It is conceptually <laughs> similar. Yeah. However, like growing up, like my brother's a huge baseball guy, big fan of the sport. He played it all throughout elementary, middle school, high school, all the schools. He fucking loves baseball, so I kind of know a little bit about it. So I could, I could. You've given me the lore of cricket. I can give you <laughs> the the lore of baseball yeah, now. Cool. Um. So basically, you got like two teams of nine, and you got. The pitcher who's on the pitcher's mound, and then like eight other guys, one of whom's the catcher who catches the ball, and then seven others that are like on the bases and in the outfield. And your goal of a baseball player is if you're if you're the one holding the bat, you've got the pitcher pitching the ball to you, you hit the ball, and then the ball, how far the ball goes is like as, like after you hit the ball, your goal is you have to run. You have to make it back to home base. So you go to first base, second, third, and then and then home plate. So if you hit the ball a short amount and you only have a little bit of time to run, you make it to first base. If you have more time, you may be second or third or maybe even a in the park home run, but those are rare. If you hit the ball out of the the the, the playing field like into the stands or whatever, that's a automatic home run. Yeah. And so like there's four bases. So like if let's say Aaron Judge hits a single, makes it to first base, and then Aaron Smudge comes out, hits another single. You have a guy on second and a guy on first. And then let's say Aaron the third hits another ball and hits a home run. That is three points, one for each player that touches home plate. All right, okay, cool. So we we have a game called Rounders, which this sounds very similar to, except I believe the bat <laughs> is smaller. Okay, <laughs> Rounders. It's called Rounders. Yeah, yeah. That's that sounds like something that like someone making a meme about British people would make up. <laughs> yeah, it's it, but our um, our bats for that are about the size of a truncheon. Um so they're not they're not particularly very large, but it sounds like identical rules. It seems like they just made the bat bigger and called it baseball for you guys. Or maybe yeah, we copied world it. champions. That's why we're the world series <laughs> champions. <laughs> Every <laughs> we got one team in the in the MLB that's in Canada, and then the rest are all in the states. How do you think? How do you think the US would fare against the Japanese in uh, in in? Um, uh, God, I forgot the name of the sport. Uh, baseball, <laughs> baseball. Because I believe the Japanese are quite good at it. Rounders, well. <laughs> rounders. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Oh, J- J- Japan's great at rounders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, baseball, though, not so much. <laughs> you know, they, they. I think there actually was like. Recently, semi recently, there was like a tournament of like every country and a real world series. Actually, yeah, a world series of, and it was U.S. and and Japan in the finals. I don't remember who won, but I'm pretty sure America won just because they have like the home field advantage. Let me look this up. Yeah, I'm like... googled it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, Japan celebrates World Baseball Tournament victory. Let's look oh. at this one. Sounds like they won then. <laughs> okay, yeah, it is the Baseball World Cup. Yeah. Yeah, there we are. Final between Japan and the US. And Japan won. Gosh bless. Look at them. They did it. <laughs> okay, so they... I guess that answers your question, Kier. Japan, uh. They did well. Anyway, what were we talking about? Uh, cricket and then rules for baseball. Boring cricket, sports. Cricket, baseball. I love sports. Hockey. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I'm not a huge sport guy as you may have known from my limited <laughs> knowledge like my brother's played baseball basically his entire life and that's the extent of my knowledge of baseball is like one player's name and like basic rules <laughs> <laughs> I, I was forced as a kid to to love football despite despite a disinclination to do so i was very <laughs> very much somebody who wanted to stay in and read books um yeah. but uh growing up in in merseyside where there are Essentially, it's a requirement for survival to play football. Um, <laughs> I I did get very very into football, and fortunately, was reasonably good at it as a kid. Not so much these days, as my son likes to remind me. Um, <laughs> but um, but I was I was at a reasonable level, and it's given me a sort of like baseline to be able to approach other sports with. To be 
around the average performer in most sports so I can enjoy participation in it. But given the option from birth, <laughs> I don't think it would have been my thing, except for judo, because I do love fighting. So I'm not going to pretend that I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow, we've been going for a while. We've been just chatting the days away. This is good. We could have done the we do, do the cricket version. We do a five day streak. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to break break for tea and every time it rains. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can call it here. Yeah. Seems um. Sensible. So, Kira, do you have any any last minute like goofs or or or, or jokes or japes that you want to end the show on? God, you, now you put me on the spot. I'm not a very funny man. I have to try very, very hard to make people laugh. And that's usually the awkwardness of that is what makes people laugh. I really don't know what to do now, Chris. <laughs> we just ended on that. <laughs> <laughs>